Hello, my name is Joss. I'm Mark. And welcome to Gak Vault videos. It's not called that. It's yeah. called the Gak Show. Show. Welcome to the Gak Show. And today we are looking at Martin. Well, this video is called Martin versus Taylor. But it's clickbait to draw you in. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare them. Yeah. So we're not going to say what's better, but we are going to compare them and look at some of the differences and some of the similarities. Yeah. So what have you got? Tell me about that beast you were holding in your hand. So this is probably my favourite Martin ever, really. Um, this is a dreadnought size guitar. This is a D18. This is a Martin D18. Uh, one of the absolute classic Martins that you find out there. Uh, the D18 means that it's got a mahogany back and sides. Mm -hmm. So the 18 signifies it's got a mahogany back and sides. And there's a 28, which means rosewood. So there's a D28, which has got rosewood back and sides. Um, so this is uh, not part of their Reimagined series, um, which we're going to look at at some point uh, as well. But um, it's kind of the specifications on this guitar. We've got a six spruce top, solid six spruce top. We've got a solid mahogany back and sides. Um, we've got uh, an Indian rosewood fretboard. Uh, we've got a mahogany uh, neck as well with these beautiful open gear ro uh, rovers, uh, beautiful open gear Grover mm, nice. tuners, um, and it's just an absolute beautiful, beautiful guitar. Is it the Indian rose? What's going on with rosewood? Is that the Indian rosewood's not rosewood? No, Indian rosewood is rosewood, but it's um, allowed. But well, I'm not too sure. I d to be honest with this whole side thing, I don't know where it starts or where it begins anymore. Yeah, it's um, I just know the ones that are like full on banned, and I don't know any others. Do you know what I mean? I don't know anything else. Okay. Um, but yeah, so. Um, these sit at about three grand. Uh -huh. um, obviously come with a hard case. Uh, made in Nazareth uh, by Martin. Uh, the one thing that I really, really like about Martin is that they've kept it in family as well. So we've got Chris Martin the fourth, who is the fourth Martin uh, family member, now CEO of the company, um, which is a really cool thing. They don't, you know, they haven't outsourced anyone. They've that kept it cool. within the family even though the size of Martin guitars is, you know, absolutely huge now. Yeah. Um, so this is the guitar I'm playing. Comparing it to this, I mean, you own now you own a Martin and a Taylor, don't you? Yeah. Um, and you're really big on acoustics at the moment, mm -hmm. so you know a lot about this one as well. Yeah. So this is actually from the series of the guitar that I have. This is a 500 series Taylor. This is a 514 CE. Um, now the reason we the reason we chose this model is because it's got the mahogany back and sides yep. and the six spruce top. Yep. So it's very reminiscent of, in terms of actual body woods, of the Martin here. The only difference with this one, it has got a mahogany net, but it's got an ebony fretboard, mm -hmm. um, which is going to, I mean, if you know anything about Taylors, if you've played a, an American Taylor, um, they're notoriously bright acoustic guitars. You know, they're the super supercharged, bright, yeah. um, the supercharged sports car of the acoustic guitar world. I like that, though. Yeah, no, it's very, very easy to play, very smooth, very just amazing to play guitar. Uh, whereas this is, you know, this is riding down the modern streets on a horse. Yeah, if you, I've, ne I've never got on with Martins too much just because I find them quite hard to, harder to play. Yeah. Um, and I'm all about just ease and, you know. Yeah, so the, it, the comfortable thing of a tailor is very, very attractive. Yeah. Right? Whereas you grab a Martin, what, if you put in as much as you, you can, that's what you get out of a Martin. Right. Yeah. So if you put in as, if you play really well, it rewards good playing. Yeah. I mean, there are people that love Martins and there are people that love Taylors. Yeah. Um, now I'm relatively new to the world, and even being new to the world, that's why I own both. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Um, but being new to the world and being a demonstrator, especially when I'm doing like Guitar Bros demo stuff. Mm. Having the Taylor and having the Martin is going to be indispensable, yeah. right? Because I can play can cover to, I can cover everything yeah, that I yeah. need to play. Um, but there are diehard Martin fans, and then there are diehard Taylor fans. Of course, I seem to sell a lot more Taylors in store than I do Martins, 
Really? Only for the reason that they've got such a vast range, yeah. I think. You can go from, say, 1,700 quid from the 100 series models, which have got, well, 1,299, 1,300 quid. You can get a 100 series, which is a solid top, laminate back and sides, but comes with a case, do you know what I mean? Whereas Martin's X series comes out of Mexico and it's the high pressure laminate stuff. Yep. So you have to spend about 1799 to 1800 quid to get an American made Martin, yep. which are the all mahogany versions. Um, you've seen them, you know, the satin finishes with the mahogany tops, backs and sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're very, very dark, very warm sounding guitars. So if you want a spruce top, you have to spend more, you know? Mm. Whereas with the Taylor, you can go into the 100 series, get yourself a solid top guitar for, you know, way under the price that you'd buy the mahogany Martin for. But you can't be a cowboy, you know, when you play a tailor. You can only be a cowboy if you that's play a That's your Martin. dream, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, my, that's why I bought a Harley Davidson. <laughs> I, I pick up my Harley Davidson tomorrow. So you're going to have a Martin and a Harley? A modern day cowboy. Boy, you need a hat. But does a modern day cowboy wear a cowboy hat? You never know, do you? That's, you just can't, you can't tell. One that. of those questions. And I can't that. carry a gun, so... Not really a modern day. Baseball bat. We've talked about this. Oh, yeah. You want to be the, the Negan of real life. I want to be the, life. Ne the Negan of real life. Anyway, we digress. What's the um, the other Martin you have? Is it, hang on a minute. Sorry. Is this your Martin? This isn't my Martin. Bring yeah. bring put, bring that one up. Because that's bring, the one you own, right? Bring it. That's your new new Martin. My new Martin. So tell me about this one. This is a OMC 18. Okay, so, so that is a, that's a cutaway. It's a considerably smaller... Let's get some. Give me some picking. So this is an OMC-18, um, it's a triple O-18 with a cutaway. Triple O-18 means the size, mm -hmm. so you've got um, uh, a triple O size, which is this guitar, but with a, um, not a cutout. Um, triple O-18, like the D-18, it's mahogany back and sides, it's got a solid Sitka spruce top, and it's this beautiful, beautiful, um, slightly off sort of colour Sitka spruce top. Um, talk guard, which is probably one of my favourite things about mines. They will do the talk guard thing. Uh, once again, we've got the uh, the rosewood fretboard. We've got the mahogany neck, uh, open gear Grover tuners. This has got um, the uh, what is it? The Aura VT pickup in it, uh, which has got the volume tone and then this enhance uh, knob on that. I haven't plugged it in yet because I've been just too obsessed with the sound of the guitar itself. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is the one that me and Tom use. Um, for guitar bros. Yeah, for guitar bros. And for my own personal use. It's just like... It's really, really nice sounding guitar. Even up in the higher registers. Because the cutaway allows you to... Not that you should. But um, it allows you to get right up there. Look, see what you think. You haven't played it, have you? What next is that? I don't know. Uh, it's nice and light. Good. I didn't 
play that one either. Oh, you need to play the D18, and I'll play the Taylor as well, so... I mean, it's easy to play, actually. That's the thing, right? I was expecting it. I was expecting it to be harder than that. <laughs> if I keep doing um, it. And Ask it me the, the other one. The D18? Yeah. Here we go. I was expecting it to be um, harder to play. You have to remember, guys, as well, this is a personal preference. You can't... No, that's harder to play. Yeah. Me. Well, it's got 12s on it. Both of them have got 12s on it, but... It's just a bit tougher on the old... On the old hands. On the old hands, yeah. Um, but you have to remember, guys, that this is all personal preference because at the end of the day, you can't get more personal than a choice on an acoustic guitar, actually. Um, electric guitars are, you know, they're very personal. You come in and there's a specific thing you want it to do. But with an acoustic guitar, um, one D18 could be completely different to another D18 in terms of the sound just because of the wood choicings. One could be heavier, one could be lighter. Um, so this is kind of my favourite guitar ever, really. This is the, the Martin D18. So. Is that just easier to play? Do you know that the easiest one to play is um, the your OMC? One. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got the same gauge of strings on it. It's got 12 to 54. I thought on it was it. this one, and then I played that one. And, then, and that just proves, like. It's all subjective. And that you, it's worth getting into a shop and just playing a bunch of them. Did we talk about the V bracing on the table? No, I was going to say. Probably one of the most important points about all new Taylor guitars. Do you want to um, yeah, yeah, quick? That. Do you want to have a quick? Yeah, I mean, play a bit of it. Also, give us a bit of a rundown on V bracing because for people that don't know what it is, it's a good thing to know. First thing is obvious, and is it so much brighter? It's so bright. I didn't really it? know you were saying it earlier, but I didn't really pick up on it until you were playing it. Yeah, then. it's worth it's, it's worth brighter. it's worth hitting the guitars hard without being, you know, an idiot to the guitar. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like at the end of the day, they're all softwoods on acoustic guitars, and they're supposed to be played in. They're supposed to be played, but there's uh, when you pick up a beautiful acoustic, it's like one of those things where you're like, okay, okay, cool, uh, okay, just. <laughs> just put the cloth there and I'm just going to play really lightly and stuff. Yeah. It's like one of those things that if you really want to feel it and love it and know it, you can... What makes it brighter? So I personally feel um, it's the, uh, the, the choice of the fretboard is uh, a big factor as well because it's an ebony fretboard. And ebony is very hard wood, right? So it automatically has this... Um, It's got this big bright sound and, uh, and I think Ebony, yeah, Ebony really brings that out of the guitar. Um, other than that, the new V bracing. Yeah, talk um, about that. So the new V bracing is basically, they were using the X bracing beforehand, which is like a standardized bracing format. Um, and they were using that and, and now Taylor developed this thing called the V bracing, which basically allows for um, more uh, attack, more punch and more volume to come out of the front of the guitar. So if you don't know what bracing is, I assume you're watching the video and you definitely know what it is, but I'll just explain it to you. So um, an acoustic guitar's resonance and sound comes from the top, right? So it's a, it's a relatively thin piece of wood. If you didn't have the bracing, the guitar's top would just collapse in on itself because there's so much pressure holding strings onto a guitar. I can't remember what the actual pressure rating is, but it's like there's yeah. a lot of pressure on an acoustic or an electric guitar um, just because of the high tension of the, of the strings. And especially acoustic because, okay, it's a shorter scale, but because of the um, uh, the thickness of strings that you choose on an acoustic guitar, there's a hell of a lot of pressure going on it's there. Quite amazing. So that would just rip the front of that acoustic guitar right off. So, um, the bracings, uh, bracing struts run across the, the top of the guitar and the bottom of the guitar, uh, but they've run across the top of the guitar in different ways um, to uh, allow the top to have as much movement as possible 
without hindering the space. So it doesn't take up a lot of space. So that's why they, um, they scallop the bracing and stuff so that there's less wood on the top of the top. Um, so that's what it is. And they've come up with this new uh, bracing, which is called V-bracing. And it just allows projection of the guitar. So if I sit back here further. Hopefully, you're definitely going to hear that I'm moving away from the microphone, but hopefully that's catching that it doesn't change, it just it doesn't change drastically. Mm. And the V bracing really helps out with that. Tom, when I was moving backwards and forwards there, was it dipping in volume but not like massive amounts? So that's what you'll get out of this that you won't get out of, say, something like the OMC. Mm. Um, but you might get it out of the dreadnought, but not as much. Because that because of the V bracing, yeah, yeah, because the top is just the 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 the, the, the moving of the top. So what's the, uh, the, br 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 the bracing on the Martin? Uh, on the D18, it's uh, the scalloped bracing. Um, and I got the neck wood wrong. It's solid cedar. Okay. Just came into my head all of a sudden. So in terms of the shape of the bracing, what is it? It doesn't say, I don't know. I have a feeling that it's going to be the standard X bracing. Yeah, it is. I can see it is. Yeah. So I think it's the standard X bracing, but it's scalloped. I think it is anyway. Nice. But yeah, that's that's just a guess. So if I'm wrong, I'm sorry about that. But it's scalloped bracing, and I'm pretty How heavy sure are they, uh, the tailor is heavier than the Martin. I think. Don't know. He's just working out now, <laughs> isn't he? He's just working out now, um, taking the piss, taking the piss. Should we? I think that's, I think that's good. I think, I think that's enough information. I think so. What it comes down to, in a, in a conclusion. <laughs> It's subjective. It's 100% subjective. And also, if you want a tailor, buy a tailor. If you want a mine, buy a mine. If you but want a Gibson, buy a Gibson. Exactly, which we're going to also try as well because there's um, some beautiful J45s we've got upstairs which are worth talking about. So, come into the store. I'm full time and up in acoustics. I'm full time and I'm full time and up in acoustics now. So, come on, y'all, wander down up into the acoustic department and come and see me or my colleague Simon Lewis and we can give you all the information you need on these fine pieces of equipment. What accent is that? It's like a wrestler. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Um, okay. No, seriously, mosey on down to the shop and then come see me or Simon and uh, we'll run you through all the acoustic guitars that we have in store. Um, sit down, try Taylor, sit down, try Martin and see which one you prefer. And it's, a ni it's, it's nicer there because it's quiet and you can just, you could jam out for hours. You can definitely not jam out for hours. I do not like that. <laughs> no, no. No, of course you can. Come upstairs and just try a guitar for as long as you want because personally with electric guitar, I can sit down and go, yeah, that's the one I want. But with acoustic guitar, it took me a long time to sit down and really figure out what I wanted. Yeah, I've played a lot of acoustics and I still find new ones all the time. Yeah. That I like. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Well, that's the end of that then in terms of information. Me and Mark are going to do a little bit more playing. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that little video on some of the Taylor and Martin guitars. Um, this isn't just saying that we've got these in range. We've got almost, we've got all the way up from the Academy series, all the way up to a 900 series on the Taylors. So we've got the entire range in store. Uh, we've got triple O's, we've got D's, and we've got uh, the Eric Clapton signature in stock. We've got Base X series, high pressure laminate versions, babies. So we've got almost the entire Martin catalogue as then, well. And then we've got, there's tons, like people, sometimes people come in the shop and they're like, oh, you don't sell acoustics? And there's, there's tons up there. We're kind of hidden away, yeah. I mean, you've, there's pretty much everything up there. Gibson, if you, yeah, Gibson, Fender, Taylor, Faith. Fender, Gibson, Taylor, Faith, Gibson, Taylor, Gibson, Taylor, and Gibson and Takamini Taylor. Now Eastman, the Eastman guitars, we should do some stuff on those. The Eastman guitars are absolutely insane for the money. I have an, I have an Eastman acoustic. Yeah, oh wow, congrats. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Joss. My name's Mark. And this has been The Gak Show. Let's jam. Let's play. Mm -hmm.